tonight's video, we have some horrifying park ranger stories, which venture off from anywhere from the state of Colorado to the state of Texas, along with some horrifying mountain and deep woods stories. Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, click on that bell, and smash that thumbs up and tell a friend. Now, let's get spooky. I'm a park ranger at the Mesa Verde National Park in southwestern Colorado. I have been a park ranger here for the past two and a half years. I have seen and heard some weird and unexplained events in my time here, but nothing compared to actually experiencing it firsthand will ever compare. In 2019, right before COVID truly hit, I was on patrol. It was a nice evening shift on a Sunday night. Most of the people have packed up and were on their way, as most people had to go to work that following Monday. Halfway through my route, I received a call from dispatch that there were some weird noises coming off of one of the trails in the vicinity which I was located. Campers over at the Walpi Loop Moorfield Campground had reported many weird noises, screams, and popping sounds coming in the direction of Knife Edge Trail. So I was literally about 10 minutes away. I had radioed back the dispatch that I would be en route shortly and finished my cigarette and then hopped back in my vehicle. Once I had arrived over at the Knife Edge Trail, I parked my vehicle, got out, grabbed my flashlight and every other necessity that I carried along with me as the sun had already set and it was already dark outside. There wasn't too many campers left, so I wondered actually how many people actually called to complain about these so-called noises on a Sunday night. But in the back of my mind, I knew that they wouldn't send me out here for no reason, so obviously something was amiss. I only had about an hour left on my shift before I would leave to go back home to the town of Cortez, which is just west of the location of this national park. It's a short drive and a very easy access off the 160. So I was really hoping and praying, crossing fingers, that this call for odd noises was something simple, like teenage kids bullshitting around, lighting fireworks, or people getting into a fight or had one too many. I was praying it was something that simple. I had just started on this trail, and I could see what the complaints were about. I could hear these screaming noises echoing off in the distance on the cliffside by the rocks. It sounded like a woman's scream for help. Now, bobcats have a very similar sound to that. So indeed, this could be a local wildlife sound, which is something that is out of our hands, that is just the way of the wild. I was hoping for that. But as I continued on the dirt path, overlooking the beautiful scenery down below, for what it's worth, as it's dark, I heard these cracking noises echoing as if rocks were being thrown against the side of the boulders, or as if rocks were falling down signaling that something large was moving about up ahead. Now, from my view that I could best describe this location on the trail is that we are on an edge of a mountainside overlooking the beautiful vast valley below with mountains in the distance. Up ahead on the trail is this wall-like stone structure, and that is where the Knife's Edge Trail name comes from. I continued walking on, just to double check to make sure that the safety of the campers that were still at the National Park were indeed safe, that this was a typical mountain lion occurrence. I want to say 5 to 10 minutes later is when the sounds intensified, and not only by volume, but in quantity. These screams were echoing all over in front of me along the stone wall. And for a split second, I caught something on top of the cliffside. This creature, I could not describe everything about it as I could barely see it, as only its head was poking out above the edge. 
Now I'm calling it a creature because at first I thought I was looking at a deer. But as I shone my light further up upon it, before it darted away, I caught that the deer's head actually was a skull. It was not a typical deer. A beautiful furry deer that you could see periodically throughout the national park amongst other locations as well. This thing looked like it was hunched over. You could tell by the posture of its shoulders that it was leaning over, looking directly at me. This thing had antlers on its head and the skull of a deer, but it was not a deer. Whatever this thing was, was wearing some type of a mask of a big deer. A mask made out of bone. Now, I'm not one to show anyone away from a good Halloween prank, something that they picked up at the Spirit Halloween store, but this was taking it to a whole nother level, especially when you're messing with officials that work here professionally. When this thing disappeared over the cliffside out of view, I had a chill run down my back and I knew something wasn't right and that this could not possibly be a scam. There was no way anyone could even get up there at this hour of the night safely without some type of supervision, let alone sit there and wait for someone to walk down the trail when it's already dark outside just to poke their head out to try to spook somebody if they happen to be even looking up there in the first place. No, this was not a prank. This was something else. I left the trail immediately. A fast-paced walk as I wasn't terribly too sure if I was being tailed. I got back to my vehicle, radioed everything in, and went back to the ranger station. I explained everything to them. They listened to me, half believing and half not. They said, maybe you saw a deer. I know what I saw. It was no deer. I was canoeing with a group of friends over at the Big Bend National Park, which is located in southwest Texas. It is a beautiful location, full of desert wildlife, the Santa Elena Canyon, carved by the Rio Grande, which features steep limestone cliffs, Langford Hot Springs near the Mexican border, and make sure that you bring a camera. While I was on my canoe trip with this group of friends, we had encountered something that we had seen on top of one of these cliffs while we were out on the weekend canoeing. This is a very short and simple story, but it is true. Around this bend, we saw this dog-like creature that was running across the top. It was running to our right, heading in the opposite direction that our canoes were heading in when we were in the water. At first, I thought it was just a wild coyote. I pointed to my friends, telling them, check out the coyote, it's huge. My friends and I all looked up. And when we did, that is when we saw this coyote. All of a sudden, it hopped up on its back hind legs and continued running bipedal until it disappeared over the edge. I have never seen a dog, wolf, coyote, any canine for that matter, run on its back legs before. We all kind of laughed about it at the time. My friends were saying it was a chupacabra. But to me, it seemed much too large to be a chupacabra. Plus, this thing was loaded with fur. This thing looked like a big wolf. A wolf that runs on its back legs. Now, at the end of the day, we had come up to a conclusion that this was a dogman sighting. None of us had our phones ready to go or our digital cameras ready, as we were all canoeing having fun. We didn't take pictures while we were canoeing. We took pictures once we were docked or we decided to go on a hike or things of that nature. None of us had our phones handy at the time to get the picture of this thing. I know it's really hard to believe, but my friends and I, we really did see something that day. This happened to me eight years ago, but surely something I'll always remember. My grandfather had made it clear that I should never talk about what we experienced, and I should just forget it ever happened. 
but I feel like I won't ever let go of this memory if I wouldn't be able to release it. So anyways, I was 11 at the time. It was summer, and usually we visit our vacation house, which I'd say is pretty secluded. We don't have any close neighbors, and the house is literally in the middle of the woods. I never disliked going there, as it's close to a river with a waterfall, which by the way, looks straight up from the Garden of Eve. My parents let me stay in the house with my grandpa as my mom and dad had been on a business trip, but I remember them promising they'd follow as soon as they got back from their trip. My grandpa picked me up around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The drive was around three hours. Evening arrived, and we're just halfway through. Because of the major car crash, we were stuck in traffic for a long time. We almost finished 10 radio dramas while wading through the traffic. We were finally driving up the mountains, which means we're close to home. But the road is insanely dark and covered in trees. There are some parts of the road where it looks like we're driving through tunnels, as the tree branches were covering the sky. Then a loud thud broke silence between the two of us. My grandpa had hit a big rock that was sitting in the middle of the road like someone intentionally put it there to cause inconvenience. This caused the car to smoke, and it turns out that our clutch overheated. My grandpa decided that we would spend the night in the car, as he was very tired and he wasn't very good at driving in the dark. I was also very tired and ready to fall asleep. My grandpa said that he'll get his pillow and flashlight at the compartment of the car. I was listening to him move and arrange our stuff and then I fell asleep. I wasn't sure how long I had been sleeping, but I had gotten woken up from a sound of scratching under the car. Like someone had a rock and was riding something under the car. I was 100% sure that I was going to forget it and just sleep in. But as I wander my eyes, I saw a small dash of light in this dark ass road. It was my grandpa facing a tree, pointing his flashlight in the total black of nothingness. I thought he also heard the scratching sound and he was looking for it. I was about to get out of the car and call for him, call him to get back to the car because I was scared shitless. But suddenly, I noticed that his neck is unusually long and had a patch of hair running through his whole neck. I knew something effed up was going on, so I started observing and looking around the car. I panicked, and there I see my grandpa, covered in blankets, sleeping in the back of the car. I quickly woke him up and told him what I saw. He quickly dismissed it, saying that maybe I was just dreaming, or that I was just tired. But I knew he was also scared from what I had told him, and he tried to stay calm so that I wouldn't panic. Just a few minutes later, The scratches were back and it got louder, and there were also thudding under the car, like someone is smashing their hands under it. I was panicking. My eyes were filled with tears where my vision were all blurry and my head hurted from all the anxiety. My grandpa heard all of it. This time he was awake and more alert. He said there might be squirrels or rabbits under the car and he'll go check it, which I quickly opposed as I seen this stuff in horror movies, and it never goes well. And I was also so scared to be left in that car just for a second. As soon as he opened the door, the flashlight where whatever that thing I saw in the woods lit, I was so freaking scared. I was laying on the floor. The light was facing our car. Then I heard the scariest sound I had ever heard in my life. It was my mom's voice singing, but we both knew that whatever that thing is, it wasn't my mama. The voice sounded disgusting and distorted. The voice was stringy, and it sounded like it was pretending and trying to imitate human language. The voice lasted for one minute, and the last part sounded so terrifying as it sounded like it was shrieking from pain and almost like laughing at the same time. He closed the door and locked all of them, and sat there in the driver's seat. He was shaking. We shared an eye contact. He was so pale and looked so frickin' terrified. 
We were both sitting in pure fear and silence as the radio signal isn't that clear around that area. That night, we drove back home and always told me to forget about everything that had happened and pray every night. I usually never post on Reddit, and I'm sorry my first submitted version wasn't long enough, but I often come here when something's in my head that doesn't let me sleep at night. I almost feel like I'm in shock. One summer day, I usually go out into the forest very close to our village. There's a nice road you could walk on with fields around you and a big entrance to the forest. I usually talk to my mom via FaceTime because I'd like to share some time with her after a long day. And so I did this. Yesterday, I was not deep inside the forest, like 200 meters, because it's at the point where I always turn around and go back home. I stood there and got interrupted by a sound that sounded like a scream. But not the typical scream you would think of, more like an echo of a deep scream from miles and miles away. I could barely hear it myself, and was only able to because everything went quiet for a second. I wasn't sure if I heard it right, but as soon as my mom asked me what that sound in the background was, I was covered in goosebumps, and I couldn't believe that she found something was odd about it as well. It was almost like a loud but still so silent whisper around my ears. I don't know what it was, and I'm really asking for thoughts from you guys because I never heard that kind of powerful scream coming through the forest that reached that far. I'm aware of the echo system of trees, but I could hear it start and end in a blink of an eye but yet so long. Just to give you some more information, the forest reaches between two cities that are around 20 kilometers from each other and is about as spread. It covers around three different districts and it has no one living inside like houses or retreats of some sort. And there are not as many as trees there as there used to be, because in our region of the country, we had a long period of storms that caused most of the trees to fall and having to be cut down. It's a German forest, so there's lots of animals, and I usually know the sounds of these animals. But this sounded like something that's bigger than anything else, and not like the machines that work there at night to transport and cut down the trees, and I still don't know how I feel about it. Thank you to anyone who might have an idea. The reason that this is keeping me up late at night is the fact that a few years back, I used to ride my bike with my friends through the forest. We always went out the whole day, riding the same roads inside the forest up and down. The thing is, that there's one specific point of the road where it has a small gap on the side of it, that you could look into it about a hundred meters into the forest, and it ends with another tree at the other end. The gap is around five meters wide, so there's nothing much to see. One day, I decided to go there on my own at around 5 p.m., when the sun was still out. I rode my bike on the little road inside the forest up and down. I went up the little hill on the road when I saw someone bald with black clothing on walking out of the small gap of the forest I mentioned before. He noticed me, and as soon as he saw me, he started running towards me while being around 40 meters away from me. The stupid kind of cocky child I was mocked him a bit and rode down the small hill, hit the brakes of my bike, and watched him run after me. The moment I realized he was going faster... I pedaled the hell out of my bike and saw him coming up the hill where I went down 10 seconds ago. I was at the end, now exit of the forest, and saw him watching me ride away, and afterwards, walking inside the forest again. And I'm sorry if I misspelled something wrong. English is not my first language. <laughs> 